Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another session Michael and I are doing on our Science is the New Religion script. Michael has put together session 97, Genesis 6-4. There were giants in the earth, and today is the 15th of January, 2023. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Brett. Welcome, dear listeners. Uh, I don't know if I had done this series when I would realize that it's a can of worms opened up here but uh, it's really hard to find out the real truth and to sort out the facts yesterday we had a telephone conversation with our beloved uh, friend and brother in christ Daryl eberhardt and uh, i talked with Daryl briefly about the subject and um, he of course confirmed that uh, there is so much uh, disinformation misinformation left out information that uh, without the bible you don't stand any chance to reveal the truth brett mm -hmm. that's right Wow, wow, wow. So where to start with all that mess? Uh, you see that last session we did uh, a fortnight ago, I think it was, we talked about the Egyptian pyramids and that these uh, gigantic stones uh, could have been moved by gigantic people. So by the offspring of uh, these uh, Nephilim, these fallen ones, together with the daughters of men. Yeah, So that uh, would also explain how they could move all these uh, big and heavy stones. It would not explain uh, how they did it, actually, um, because there is intelligence needed for that, uh, careful planning and all the knowledge about materials and all that stuff. But uh, I think that uh, much, much knowledge has been lost uh, when the flood came, and uh, these uh, buildings were uh, most likely been erected before the Great Flood. So this is the continuation of last time. There were giants in the Earth, session two. You see, there are so much disinfo agents around there and so many people are being fascinated about the evil and the occult and all the stuff that sometimes I'm scratching my hair. I don't know um, if it would be better if you would do uh, Bible sessions alone instead of uh, using all our precious time, especially usually on Sabbath, that uh, going to all explaining in all the details, all the lies in the world. But uh, Hopefully we we'll get get to the Bible very soon because we need the Bible to find out the truth. Uh, many people really are eager to know everything around and accept the Bible because they are so fascinated with all that fairy tales. Yeah, you see, every region and every generation and every continent, every culture, they have their counter gods. They have their pagan belief systems and they have their worship of uh, images and idols. Yeah, so if you go back to the uh, origin of mankind, many people will tell you that it's Atlantis as a pre-Adamic creation. Um, it's just a, a fallen creation, therefore God has to do it again. We saw that God is not infallible, God is not almighty, yeah, God is just a, yeah, trying out something. Yeah, so it's, it's unbelievable what all this, all this stuff is, is, is coming from. You see so much uh, legends and all this stuff, for example, the Anunnaki, these were a form, a group of deities of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians and Babylonians. And you see where to start and where to end. It's all just a big BS. They all are just worshipping images and, images and idols, especially those who are being from the so-called underworld. Mm -hmm. But that is not our thing. Our thing are the giants. Why did I mention the uh, Anunnaki here? Yeah, because the, the problem is that in every almost in every legend you see there is a fight between good and evil yeah and also that is happening here in that uh, german portion of the anunnaki report um, which i have retranslated into english the anunnaki are in mesopotamian mythology the gods of the underworld who are opposed to those of heaven the igigu yeah, so that means that is a fight between good and evil, or between heaven and hell. Although heaven, although although hell, sorry, although hell usually depicts a, just a grave, who are opposed to those of heaven, the igigu. Yeah, so <laughs> of course you see the underworld is a, opposed, the opponent um, of the gods in heaven. So that's the same as in a biblical sense, uh, Jesus Christ and his opponent of uh, Satan. Yeah, you see that when we talked about the sons of God, we talked about the book of Job. And in the book of Job, just in the first chapter, just in the beginning of the book of Job, you really find that uh, quote there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Could you please? Yes. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Yeah, so Satan came among the sons of God. So when the Lord called out for the sons of God to come, Satan also came. Of course, you see, the, Satan is a creation of God. So you can say that everybody is, in a sense, a son of God. But when in the Bible it clearly speaks about the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, it means that there can only be heavenly beings without any mortal human body, of course, because no mortal man can just come to present themselves or himself before the Lord. And Satan came among the sons of God. So when Jesus Christ is the only begotten son and the beloved son of God, then uh, his opponent uh, is, so, is, so to speak, when I was just uh, plainly in uh, how to how to explain it in English uh, in just in lay terms, Brad, uh, he's just a black sheep of the family. Do you have any other explanation or any remark about that? Well, yeah, I mean, the sons of God, we're talking about the angels, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, when the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So he's an angel too, mm -hmm. but he's a fallen angel. Yeah, and once he was a cherub even. Uh, so he yeah, was a special. and even more importantly, he's the chief of the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. So you might have angels that have been appointed to come to earth by God. You might have fallen angels. So, yeah. That's a, a very interesting statement because uh, the sons of God, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you remember what is said in the Bible about Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Mm -hmm. So that means you have um, one Son of God that is closer to the Father than anyone else, and that would be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the opponent of Jesus Christ, of course, would be Satan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And of course we're living in the, the new covenant. Then we're living you know, in the new covenant, yeah. which is the covenant Jesus made by the blood of his sacrifice. Yeah, and then you have to rely maybe also on the fact that uh, if you really see that uh, Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son, so he's special. And he's still salvator, or this is the salvation of mankind. Yes. Um, you see, if they are all sons, they are brothers, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah th right. Then you got, then you got the old uh, story of Cain and Abel. Yes. Yeah? And right. we know that Satan was a murderer from the beginning. And Satan did not want to present Jesus Christ as the light of the world. You see Jesus Christ in 8.32. In, uh, no, no, not only, just, not only just a murderer, but a liar. Yes. And not only just a liar, but the father of lies. Yes, the, the origin of lies, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so what, what turned out in heaven to be the rebellion against God and his anointed, uh, look at, uh, then it, it turned out to be the same and on earth. Look at Psalms 2, um, the kings uh, took counsel together against uh, the Lord and his anointed. I, I, I can't present you word by word at the moment. But, no, uh, you got it. Yeah, that's right. I, I think it's fair enough. And so that everything that happened uh, of the uh, revolt, of the revolution, of the rebellion against God, what uh, did take place in heaven, just, of course, took place on earth. Why? <laughs> because there were the same entities. Yeah. So Satan, as uh, once Lucifer, uh, name was Lucifer, um, then Satan was saying that, okay, then if I can't touch God, then I will try to touch his creation. And the creation also went into rebellion against God yeah, in the form of Eve. Yeah? Eve rebelled against God and said, oh, no, I'm just um, eager and I'm just more pleased to follow um, the promising of the serpent instead of uh, obeying the orders, the commands of the Almighty One. Right. 
So that means, in my humble opinion, uh, that is the same here as the old fight uh, struggle against uh, good and evil or light against darkness or Jesus Christ against Satan. You see, that is all in the elections, it's, it's the same. Yeah. And um, the gods of the underworld who are opposed of those in heaven. Yeah. You see that who made them the gods of the underworld because they were thrown down to earth. That is the same almost. And it's very interesting because it's the other way around here. In the Enuma Elis, I, you see that it's legend, fairy tales, and all that uh, BS. The Ijiji, yeah. So the uh, those are in heaven. Those are in heaven must work for the Anunnaki until they rebel against them. Yeah. So it's the other way around. So heaven has to work for hell. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Yeah, I really have have retranslated that. Yeah, from German into English. Yeah, that is what they tell tell us. I have not I have not read that mythology, and I'm not interested in that. But you see that for the the general view, for the broad picture, um, it's always the struggle against uh, good against evil, and nothing has changed mm -hmm. in thousands of years. Nothing has changed, other than the further perverting of the truth, Michael. That's that's kind of where we're at. We just keep getting more and more confusion in this world. You will you will never uh, finish any sessions uh, when you just try to reveal um, all the lies out of them because the, these lies are just the majority of, of so-called facts presented to us because the majority of people is in the Antichrist spirit. So the majority of people are liars. Well, and they're not aware of it either. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. They're not even aware that they're lying because they mm -hmm. assume what they've been told is the truth, right? Yeah, it, it's it's mess everywhere. So the pre-astronaut interpreted them as humanoid extraterrestrials from the hypothetical planet Nabiru. You see, have you time until 2028 <laughs> to go into all only that? <laughs> yes, according to David Icke, and you see that that's where uh, the... That's where all the mess starts. Yeah, you see David Icke. Yes, uh, all this uh, unreliable uh, uh, time waste. Oh, but it's so easy to debunk David Icke. All you got to do is look up at that interview he did back in the I don't know eighties or whatever nineties. Yeah, yeah, I in don't his know. jogging suit. Huh? Yeah. yeah, right in his yeah, jogging yeah. suit, and they ask him, "So you mean that you're Jesus Christ?" He didn't say yes, but he implied it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know what spirit that is, so you don't even need to bother with anything with David Icke, do you? No, 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 no. Sorry, I just want to switch from German, from German to English now. Right. No, <laughs> exactly. no, no I don't, don't want to mess with it, and I don't want to spend the precious time of our listeners with it. I just want to yeah, tell you yeah, right. that when it comes down to mythology and all that stuff, that we will be thrown around and... and oh, being... that reminds me, Michael. Jörg Glissman did a video with uh, Alan Lamont way back, I think it was 2014 or somewhere around there, where they were talking about David Icke, mm -hmm. and David Icke wouldn't touch the Vatican with a thousand foot pole. I know, I know. I've seen videos of him where he was standing actually in the Vatican. Yeah, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but the, the thing is that you see, you, you have to take the Bible as our foundation, and if you don't do that, you will be tossed around because you don't know whom to believe. There we so, go. Numerous pseudo scientific theories revolve around the Anunnaki. Yeah, of course, these are fairy tales for grown ups. But they are still fairy tales. Yeah. So, and Mr. Ike says, okay, that is, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, this is a shapeshifter's original reptiloid form from a constellation of the dragon. <laughs> Please avoid uh, the papacy of the Bible at any cost. Uh, who still live on earth unrecognized and want to establish a totalitarian new world order. Well, you see that I have a hard time imagining that George Herbert Walker Bush is a reptilian. I have no problem to say that he was uh, in a kind of way responsible also for the assassination of President John F. Kennedy because he was in Dallas at that uh, very special day on the 22nd of November. But I have my problems with it because uh, I don't uh, think that God has uh, created something else than humans uh, with it. So he does not uh, create any reptilians. 
And so um, we have to face the fact that um, so many people are making uh, BS comments about anything, and especially without having the Bible as their foundation. So let's get it on with the uh, thing about the giants. Before we go to the Bible, uh, we have a big, big problem with it because there are so many books beside the Bible, or even in some Bibles. Uh, some of them is the Book of Giants from Wikipedia. Huh? The Book of Giants. Yeah, and the next thing that comes up is the illustration of Milton's Paradise Lost. I said, oh, that can't be. You see, the, you can't mix a, a, a book which claims itself to be of a, a divine origin and then to have an illustration of a, of a novel with it. But uh, you see that people don't, uh, don't see um, uh, the real uh, problem with it, it seems. Yeah? So that book of giants is an apocryphal Jewish book which expands upon the genesis narrative of the Hebrew Bible in a similar manner to the book of Enoch. Aha! So there you go. Yeah, You got once again another apocryphal book where you do not know where th what the author is, if that all is a reliable source and uh, what to make out of it. So you got additional information lying on top uh, of uh, your information on the Bible and you do know what's what. In a similar manner to the book of Enoch. And I said, okay, we have to clear the facts of the book of Enoch. <sighs> because yeah, um, there is also a big reason why I usually do not go into apocryphic books. Um, one of the reasons is actually the book of Enoch. And the book of Enoch has something to do with Freemasonry. But uh, it's hard to sort out all the facts, especially when you're not a Native American or English speaking person. So uh, let me try to explain it. This is an article I found about the explanation, not about the book itself. He says, Mr. Ron Blaisdell says, The Legend of Enoch falls but fascinating Grand Lodge of British Columbia Bulletin, January 1974. Because Freemason heavily relies on Enoch for several reasons. And we are still in the Giants in the Earth session. Quote, some of the more fascinating historical facts about Freemasonry concerns events which modern scholars believe are pure figments of imagination. The legend of Enoch, for instance, makes great reading, although there is not a shred of evidence to substantiate it. Enoch is said to have built a system of nine brick walls into the bosom of Mount Moriah. The walls were beneath each other and entered through holes in the arches. Mm -hmm. So you see that uh, they got a special reason to present you that Enoch as a builder, as a prominent supreme builder. Mm -hmm. This legend, of course, has not the slightest historical support. <laughs> Yeah. Nor does the name Enoch appear in the old manuscript constitutions, which indicates the legend was probably fabricated some years after the first Grand Lodge of Speculative Masons was formed in 77. By whom, Brad? Uh, by the I'd... Roman Catholic Church. As the Protestant arm of the Roman Catholic Church, they have installed Freemasonry. You know that when you have read the book or excerpts of it of the Grand Design, for example. That is my knowledge at the moment. And I know that you're in the possession of that book, right? Yeah, but do I have much time to read it? No, 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 no. But but I just was <laughs> remembered that you know that book. Yeah. 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 OK. Well, you know, this is a good, good point, Michael. Um, there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to put together here. Uh, just trying to get trying to speed up to where you're trying to go here, Michael. I'm, I'm, I'm having just, a hard time. I'm just time. trying to to uh, compare the apocryphal books, for example, the Book of Giants, uh, to the Book of Enoch, because the Book of Enoch is also an apocryphic uh, thing, and uh, which uh, contradicts and confuses people. I think by on on purpose and not by accident. You know, listen, I had I, I'll just. Um, if you don't mind, make a quick comment if I can. I went to go visit some good friends of mine and um, do some work at their house on, on Friday. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I was talking with the mother of, of my friends here, and uh, she was talking about her experience she had um, 
some years ago in the early 70s when she was in a brick house and it was very, very cold and, and she thought she was going to die and she started praying. And she prayed and um, she felt like her whole whole being was changed, that she, you know, had a, a very, very important moment where she felt like she was being born again, born into the spirit of Christ. But of course, you know, without going into all kinds of details, um, she wasn't using a Bible, nor did she have uh, much, you know, uh, biblical knowledge. Uh, I think she's, you know, maybe on the verge of, of coming to that uh, conclusion that she needs uh, her Bible and she needs to be reading her Bible. But um, certainly if you think that there are 777 books of the Bible and we're only getting 66 because of the Vatican, you have a problem with understanding who you know, on which side of the argument you want to frame the debate. Because if you give all the power to the Vatican, you're going to be misled. So you have to look at, okay, what, what is the spirit of God? What, what are we? We're, we're flesh and spirit, you know. And I was trying to tell her that, you know, we are, we, when we are born again, we're of the spirit, and the flesh has no meaning and no value anymore. And it's like all of a sudden she just got it, you know, I could tell. And that's great. And, and that's kind of where it's at, Michael, is, is that, okay, there's all these dead minions around us that are Jesuitical that have, have uh, given away their spirit and they, they are completely controlled by the flesh. And uh, that's a major major concern for someone that has been born again into the spirit because you do not want to be influenced by the flesh more than you are influenced by the spirit because then it has power over your spirit then see so your spirit is diminished by the flesh so they're at war with each other at all times in our lives whether we're aware of it or not so, yeah, I mean, the apocryphal books are not spirit-inspired. That's why they're not in the Bible. The 66 books of the Bible are inspired words of God. That's why they're there, because they have meaning, because they give us uh, true salt and light. And that's so hard to explain to someone who is coming from that perspective that have been polluted by all this Roman Catholic garbage. But that's the majority of, you know, this is the majority of, of the people, including us. We've all been polluted by this stuff. So, yeah, it, it takes a long time and a lot of thought in order to really commit yourself to the truth of the Bible, doesn't it, Michael? Yeah, and so that's the second time that the uh, fight has crashed today. <laughs> And, uh, oh so wow! Right when I was talking, I have before. yeah 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 yeah. You're not to blame. It's, it's just that I have to uh, minimize uh, the file size. It seems, but no problem. That's uh, the reason why I went to the book of Enoch and all the stuff is to make to have a prime example for the things um, that are hard to explain. You know why I'm going into the book of Enoch has a simple reason because I have read it. Yeah, I have to admit I just read or once read a book of the apocryphic. That was uh, the book of Enoch. But I have to also to admit that I only achieved to read 50 or 60 pages before I really got uh, sick of all the stuff because um, <laughs> I can't argue about it. Ju just can't say that my gut feeling told me there is something terribly wrong because that does not seem to be right. Now, although I was interested in the subject, it didn't seem to have any substance with it. It, it, it seemed to be out of context. It, it, it seems that uh, God would not use that kind of words in that kind of order. You, it, there was something fishy of it. I, I can't explain it on a, in a scientific way. I just only can tell you that my gut feeling says, okay, but beside my uh, interest in all the stuff as a researcher, maybe, um, it, it didn't appeal to me. And so therefore I just, uh, 
was uh, stopping and uh, that was about I think it was three years ago or so and I never intended to go back to that route again yeah so that was my problem with the book of Enoch <clears throat> that I said okay that uh, sounds a little bit more like boasting oh we are so we are so good and uh, the side is so powerful and all the stuff uh, than anything else so I have my heart uh, time with the book of Enoch and that's why I wanted to use that as an example how easy it is to mislead the people yeah so and and that is also just an article that does not necessarily mean that is the truth yeah yeah I know there are errors in it yeah and so they are telling you that in the Freemason that Enoch guy character is responsible for uh, building uh, things around under beneath and all the stuff of Mount Moriah in the old city of Jerusalem that is a site of a numerous biblical acts of faith uh -huh. but <laughs> but Mount Moriah's history begins in Genesis. In the 22nd chapter, God commands Abraham, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will tell you, that is by far not the official King James Bible content, but uh, so be it at the moment. That is just an example here, and I just go back to the root of the giants soon enough. Yeah. So, but let's sort it out. Why I have my troubles with the book of giants, which is an apocryphal book. Um, I will explain that in the example by using the example of the book of Enoch, right? Because I have read the book of Enoch, or at least parts of it. Okay. So then let's go back to the nitty gritty. If you think that is all a coincidence that in the mountain of Moriah or Mount Moriah that uh, the opponent of the mastermind Sherlock Holmes depicted is Professor Moriarty, yeah, Moriarty. You remember Moriah, Moriarty, and that uh, in the Lord of the Rings, that's the land of Mordor. Hmm. <laughs> But it's all a big coincidence, no? So what happened on the Temple of Mount Moriah? Mount Moriah. Moriarty, yeah, so Professor Moriarty, yeah, Moriarty, yeah, it's just a, an accident here or just a happening randomly. Was the site where David brought a threshing floor? Years later, David's son Solomon would build the first temple to God on Moriah. Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, restored after the Jews were freed from Babylonian captivity. Haha. -ha. Yeah, so that is very interesting. So that's a, it's a key element is that Mount Moriah. So therefore, and Freemason, they tell you that, oh yeah, that was the Enoch. And now you got a big problem with it because first of all, the Bible in the New Testament, Jesus told us not to use any uh, gene genealogy in, uh, in vain, wasn't that, uh, Brad? It's kind of, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that we're not to, uh, to pursue pursue endless genealogies, I think yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, again, we're flesh and spirit. Which has more priority to you, dear listener? Mm -hmm. The flesh or the spirit? And that's that's what it also says in First John, doesn't it? That, you know, those who are born of the flesh are flesh. Those mm -hmm. that are born of the spirit are spirit. Mm -hmm. So this is a genealogy of Adam, or the family tree of all the descendants of Adam. What I have my problems with that here, other sons and daughters, because that not, that's not mentioned in the Bible here. Yeah? So please take that with a big, big grain of salt here. So we are concentrating on Cain and Abel. And of course the line of Abel was uh, discontinued for the obvious reasons of uh, Abel being slain by Cain on the field. So, and this is a line of Cain. And here you see and the line of Seth. Uh, Seth is the um, the next uh, child that uh, Adam and Eve were getting after they were thrown out in paradise, as far as my understanding is. And so this is the line of people here. This is Jared, Enoch, Methuselah and Lamech. Methuselah being the one uh, who officially had the longest lifespan in the Bible of 969 years, so 969, okay? So, and then um, Enoch uh, beget uh, Methuselah, Methuselah beget Lamech, and Lamech beget Noah. Noah uh, built the ark yeah, with the three sons in it and their daughters and his wife. Uh, the sons' names are Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And then the flood came. Mm. So, you see the problem here with the genealogy when they claim that it's the book of Enoch. You have to see it right from the start. You see that Enoch character being the father of Methuselah, okay? 
But you see, this is the righteous line of Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamed, which led to Noah. Noah was a just man. And this is the line of Seth. And this is the unjust line. This is the line of Cain. Yeah? Cain being the first murderer on the earth, under the influence of Satan, of course, because Jesus Christ said in John 8.44, um, Satan is the liar and a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. So say, say, Michael, you said Seth, but you said it in such a way that it sounded like the Egyptian set. Oh, it's okay. Seth, 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 Seth. Okay. Right. Just be more. sure that our listeners know okay. that and, so, and, and that we're not talking about the Egyptian no, no, set. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit okay. more soft yeah, on the H. Yeah, so Seth. Exactly. Seth. Yes, okay. Seth. Okay. So, yeah, thank thank you. you for reminding me. Yes, no problem. Okay. So this is the righteous line of Seth. Yeah. And okay. you have the unrighteous line of Cain. Yeah. And look what is the second position under Cain. Can you read that or shall I enlarge it? Oh, Enoch. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you got here, wow. you got an Enoch. So which Enoch are we talking about, Mike? Yeah, that you have to ask the Freemasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so that is very interesting when you really uh, sort out all the things also about the Freemasons and their uh, Anu Luchis, yeah, so their special um, uh, dates. Uh, I have to, have to go back to this. Where is that uh, Anu? Oh, sorry. Anno, Anno Lucis, Lucifer, Anno Lucis. Yeah, the year of the light Hello? is a dating system used in Mason ceremonial or commemorative Hello? proceedings. My connection is bad here. Oh. Uh oh. Did I lose ya? No. So we're talking about the two different lines. You have the line of Cain and then you have the line of Christ. Or the, the line of Satan and the line of Christ, I guess we could say. Yeah, or the line of Cain and the line of Seth, or the line of Abel. The, the righteous line and the unrighteous line. Cain and Abel, there we go. Yeah, and what do oh, you... Oh no, Abel's just uh, off to the side there. Yeah, okay. sure, he has been murdered, yeah, so... Yeah, that's right. There's no offspring. Right. But uh, the, yeah, the, the point of the yeah, fact that's... is that Freemasonry always relies also on the unjustful, unrighteous line here with Tubal Cain. You see Tubal Cain, you know 007 Tubal Cain or the Master Mason ritual mm -hmm. of Hiram Abiff and all the stuff. You see that all relies heavily on that uh, line of Cain. And so there is an Enoch in the line of Cain. There's an Enoch in the line of Adam or in the line of Seth, so to speak. Yeah, and you, when you really sort out all the facts, you know that the Freemason with the Anuluchis, the you're right. Yeah. yeah. What I'm trying to say is here that uh, they got a special uh, system, and if I don't want to go in all mm. the stuff here, but uh, it is just so that if you really uh, calculate it back, then you know that the Enoch that they are trying to uh, sell you um, is the Enoch of the unrighteous line, and yeah, not the Enoch of the righteous line. So when we are talking about the Book of Enoch, which Enoch we are talking about? Huh? So that is my first problem with it. Yeah. So it, it's unbelievable. You see that the, the the lies. It's 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 unbelievable. Yeah. Even if you go into Wikipedia articles of Bible studies in German, they tell you that Enoch is one of the most famous persons of the Old Testament. That's about. Uh, that's the fact is about that he, together with Elijah, is the only one who did not die. Um, in, in Judah 14, it says that uh, Enoch, Enoch, the seventh uh, of Adam. Judah 14. Judah. Where is the King James Bible? Where is Judah? Right, that is your chapter, huh, Judah? Wasn't that your chapter? The book of Jude? Mm, no, no. Judah is J U. Uh, yeah, right, you're right. D H-A, isn't ah, it? Ah, okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, I meant Jude, yeah? Jude chapter 14, and you see there, there is a hint here. Can you read that? Yes, right, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Yeah, so, the seventh from Adam, I think that he, Jude was telling uh, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, to uh, differentiate between the two lines. Ah, yes. 
That yeah. makes sense. That makes Not sense. Not the second from Cain. <laughs> yeah, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so seven from Adam. Adam being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To have a an understanding and 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 the knowledge that it is speaking of the righteous line of Adam and Seth and not of the unrighteous Enoch. Correct. Yeah. So that is so so time consuming to to sort all the things out. But I think that is really really important that you really see that you can be fooled if you think that the first book of Enoch, an apocryphic book, yeah, is a book of the righteous Enoch. It can also be the book of that Enoch. Or it is a book that has only been attributed to Enoch. So it's an apocryphical book or pseudo book, which has somebody as an originator, which we, it is not known. Yeah, maybe somebody of the, yeah. On the other hand, you see who, who was uh, writing down things, only people who could write. So the high priest and the scribes, mm -hmm. usually. Yeah, so they had all their time on their hands, yeah, hundreds of years uh, to forge any documents. As the Roman Catholic Church, they are absolutely masters in forgery. Look at the Constantinian donation and the pseudo. Uh, Isidorian what? Creed decretals. Thank you, that's very hard, hard to hard word pseudo, to pronounce. Pseudo Isidorian Creed uh, decretals, excuse uh, me. Yeah, you see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you see, that is, it, it's, it's really. Uh, it's, it's really important. Mm. Yeah, it's really important. Because in, in Genesis 4, 17, there's also some, somebody who was called of the name of Enoch. His father was Cain, and he was uh, naming a city after his name. Yeah, 4, 16. Yeah? So Genesis 4, 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch and built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Yeah. You see, that's the problem with it. Yeah, we're speaking of different Enoch. This is not the Enoch that Jude is talking about. Although the name is similar, or actually the same. Yeah? On biblical studies, the fate of Enoch and Elijah, it's been said, many claim that neither Enoch nor Elijah ever died and that they remain alive today. It is said that both were taken to heaven and that they remain there even at present, living in the very presence of God himself. Various Jewish and Christian legends, some of them quite ancient, have been handed down in support of these traditions. The scriptural record itself, however, does not substantiate such beliefs. Very little is known concerning Enoch. He was the son of Jared and the father of Methuselah. Brett, speaking of the righteous line here. Yes, not to be confused with the son of Not to be confused Cain. with Enoch, son of Cain. Yeah, so Genesis 5:18. Next chapter, please. And Jared lived in 162 years, and he begat Enoch. Hmm. So it's it's for a usual uh, Bible reader, it sounds all the same. You really have to study the things, yeah. So. The unrighteous Enoch um, is not the Enoch of the Bible of the father of Methuselah, but the son of Cain. You know, once again, maybe that is a little bit more uh, easy to read here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, and this Enoch of the line of Cain is just the son of Cain. So must be older. Hmm? Yeah. Much older. Much older. Hmm. Yeah, so that Enoch of the uh, chapter 5 of the book of Genesis was a member of the line of descent through set by which the knowledge of God was preserved, or the faith of God actually was preserved. Huh? The expression walked with God is used only of Enoch in Genesis 5.24 and Noah in Genesis 6.9 in the early chapters of Genesis. So Genesis 5.24. 
and that's not an easy feat. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him to carry away, fetch. That's Genesis 5.24. The other verse is Noah 6.9. That was the only man who found grace in the eyes of the Lord before the flood bread. Only one. Sure. Mm -hmm. So Noah also walked with God. As Enoch did. Enoch and Noah were the only one who walked with God. Elijah was the ninth century before Christ, prophet of Israel. The northern kingdom of the divided monarchy during the reigns of Ahab, Isaiah, and Jehoram. The episodes recorded in scripture and the life of Elijah are basically concerned with the clash between the worship of Yahweh and Baal. Uh, so between uh, that's both... Elijah. Elijah. Oh, Elijah. Sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah. In, in Germany, we say El Elijah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Elijah. Sorry. Ahab fostered okay. a Phoenician variant of Baal worship, which was the nature religion of Canaan, meaning the cannibals, after his marriage with the tyrant princess Jezebel. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. there you go. You know who, who that woman was, huh? The Jezebel. Listen spirit. to that. A Phoenician variant of Baal worship. And we know uh, a lot of this Phoenician uh, uh symbology in our modern times don't we like the phoenix the double-headed phoenix mm -hmm. that comes from phoenicia mm -hmm. so not surprising they were worshiping baal there which yeah. was the nature religion of canaan yeah Ugh. fertility religion yes yeah right yeah but it was jezebel so a, a, a woman who was chiefly responsible. So the woman was chief. Huh? What do you see when you see all these politicians nowadays? In Germany, you had a chancellor, Angela Merkel. You got uh, foreign ministers who are female. You got uh, defense ministers who are female. We have never served in the army. Yeah. Yeah. So when Jezebel was chiefly, so as a chief responsible for the systematic extermination, not of the Jews, but also of the Jews. So this is also, a, um, yeah. I don't I have to avoid the word it starts with age <laughs> yeah um, mm -hmm. extermination of the worship of Yahweh and the propagation of the idolatrous worship of Baal in Israel first Kings etc etc since the word heaven is used in reference to Elijah's Elijah's mm -hmm. El right Elijah's removal it is important that we note which usage of the word is is in view in second Kings concerning Elijah since the case of Enoch, nothing at all is said of heaven. It is foolhardy to claim that since God somehow transferred him somewhere for a period of unspecific duration, he therefore doubtlessly transferred him into the celestial realms themselves so that he might remain in the divine presence even unto the day. And that is the problem that uh, I am facing here. Um, uh, how to look for certain words uh, I think it was translated translated I hope yeah oh, phew, great um, yeah uh, that's Hebrews 11 5 by faith Enoch so the righteous Enoch the seventh from Adam like according to Jude 1 14 was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. Once again, the same uh, origin here in um, uh, Greek uh, 3346. Yeah? For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So translated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why 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 it does not work. Means to transfer, exchange, change sides, carry over, change to remove, to translate, to turn. So it's not a word by word translation, but it's uh, somewhere to be moved from one point to another. To transfer, yeah. To transfer, yes. That he should not see death. So would that mean that he's still alive? 
I think it's hard to tell with the, with just that. Well, universe. by our worldly knowledge, um, this this doesn't make any sense at all. This is this is the power of God, isn't it? Yes. So we really don't know at this point. It's yeah. better not to say. Yeah. Just let people figure it out for themselves. Yeah. This so, is this is exactly why I refrain from doing sessions on a regular basis, Michael. Is because, you know, the scripture says, study to show thyself approved. Which means you have to study on your own. You can't rely on Michael and I to tell you everything. You have to go search it out for yourself. You have to search it out because, um, you know, we might have ways of thinking that aren't in line with your studies dear listeners so it's a tough thing it's a very difficult thing we can do our best but that's all michael and i can do right michael yeah and so you have to take things into context and sometimes it will not reveal at first hand but you have to wait maybe here sometimes yeah because Jesus Christ says, uh, no one has ascended into heaven except he who had descends out of heaven. John 3.13. Huh? Well, you certainly have to pray about it. You can't just, yeah. you know, think that, oh, I can just go study and learn the truth. Well, no, there's more to it than that because we have something called faith. And it's much more intricate because it was a faith that has been developed over thousands of years. It's not just you know, something that's come about accidentally, like this is some kind of coincidence, right, Michael? Mm. It's not a coincidence at all. What <laughs> has happened is we've had these people, the Bible's told us that there's going to be people amongst us that are going to mislead us and destroy our faith. And this is exactly what's happened, is, you know, our churches are no longer what they once were 500 years ago. Let's take that for an example, because that was when everyone knew that the Pope was the Antichrist. Mm. Everybody knew it. You didn't have to talk about it. Everyone knew, especially the people that had faith. And those didn't have faith could care less. Well, it's kind of the truth today, too. But the thing of it is, is that we've been really, I mean, look at all of the, the lies. Mm -hmm. the liars yeah, yeah and just that's that's a, that's the point of it you see you have to stop somewhere because it just takes on time and time and time to reveal all that lies i'm doing i'm doing my best but you see that i got not 24 hours a day and i'm not not living 969 years what, to... exactly michael but what makes it even worse is that the people really think they have the truth But the fact of the matter is there's a spiritual and a flesh division between you know all of this and you know are you going to be of the spirit or are you going to be of the flesh now yeah you also have a limit a certain limit yeah so like clint eastwood man's got to know his limitations but you see the limitations are that you really have to be honest to people and say that i don't know and it's it's also not uh, valid it's well, also we're not important. supposed to know in some yeah. ways yeah but it's... in others we are i mean as far as the antichrist we're supposed to know who the antichrist is because he's our enemy in the in the world yeah you know, sure. the that's, spirit that's, of that's, antichrist that's not that's not a tough issue brett but I, no I wanted it's to, not what i wanted to add is just simply but it is a tough <laughs> issue if you're a part of an ecumenical church oh, okay I love it when you it's, rant. <laughs> it's very true, though, Michael. I had, I had, I had this discussion with my mother last night, you know, mm -hmm. and we just touched upon it. But I just, I really think those of you, dear listeners, that are part of an ecumenical church, you got to really think about this because it's not you and it's not your. Um, congregation for instance it's the leadership of the congregation that we're complaining about here you might love all the people in your congregation dearly and care for them and provide for them but they're me they're all misleading by the leadership of your church they're leading you into hell they're signing a covenant with the antichrist behind your back
It's called ecumenism. And it's not that easy to come to this knowledge and decide, I need to get the hell out of my church. But listen, if you're part of an ecumenical church, you really do need to get the hell out. And I'll tell you why. It's because they've signed an agreement with the Antichrist, the Pope. It's called ecumenism. Very dangerous. And what these Jesuits do above you is mix up all of your doctrines so it makes it so confusing you don't even know that, you know, <laughs> that uh, one of the disciples was corrupt. Yeah, his name was Judas. Judas Iscariot. Jesus said it would have been better if he'd never been born. Hmm. And what have they done in these ecumenical churches that they've taken away the King James Bible and they've made it like a sin to read it and believe it and preach that to others that, oh yeah, it's only the King James Bible. So they have this King James only movement. I mean, how absurd the time we're living in, Michael. Just absurd. But that's, you know, if you want to hear my rant, I'll give you a full, I'll give you a full rant. I, I mean, I, I'm really upset over the members of my Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Yeah, so my point actually to come back to the session, I really grant you every minute that you want to, 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 to make a rant. Um, I'm just really trying to focus on the book of on the giants and I just wanted to try out to uh, take the example of the book of Enoch that you really do not know who read it who, who wrote it and uh, which Enoch they are talking about yeah, and so that's right. and so it does not make sense to go into the book of giants as well you see when the book no. of giants has been depicted in Wikipedia that's not the fault of the book of giants but uh, in the book of Wikipedia with a, a painting of uh, paradise lost from Milton you see what's the point <laughs> yeah that's a, yeah where were wow. you 10 20 minutes ago where were you where were you asleep asleep yes the book of giants his illustration of this is coming from wikipedia the book of giants is illustration of the war in heaven for milton's paradise lost come on really we are talking about fairy tales here we are talking about not a substantiate amount of uh, divine information therefore it can be all made up and that is my point if we don't stick to the bible oh, look at we... this look at this the religion is, what is that? Manichaeism? Yeah. What is Manichaeism? Oh, you're not curious today, huh? You are not curious today. <laughs> um, Manichaeism, is that something to do with, uh, hold on. Thanks for looking it up, Michael. Ach, du liebe Güte. My goodness. <laughs> uh, Is a former major religion by the Parthian prophet Mani in the Sasanian Empire. My, my, my. Eastern religion. Yes. Wow, dualistic cosmology. Boy, that sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> Real nice. Spiritual world of light and evil material world of darkness. Yeah, well. Many as the final it, prophet after Zoroaster. There you know. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. After Zoroaster, Gautama, Buddha, Gnosticism. and Jesus. Gnosticism. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. So once again, no wonder get, it's such garbage. I'm trying to get back on track. <laughs> to my yeah, best. what a bunch of garbage, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but that's what we have to deal with. Okay, we got to take out the garbage, don't we, Michael? <laughs> Yes, yes, but I wanted to, to use the book of Enoch. I don't think that it was to no avail to use the book of Enoch that you see there are different Enoch, there are different stories, oh. and you can't you, you can't mix it up. You even can mix it up in the Bible when you are not cautious. And therefore I do not go into the book of giants and all the stuff because we can't prove the authority or the originality of that scripts. Yeah, that is my point. Yeah, you see, we can and just have discussions of uh, what does it mean then Enoch has uh, been transferred, but I wasn't there. Yeah, and the Bible does not reveal it, so it, it's also not important for your salvation. What is important for your for your salvation is the belief in Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God. Point, period. 
Yeah, so that is uh, that. That's all I have to to talk about. Yeah, but uh, what really is is translated? Um, you see that uh, it, it it would be the sub subject of a real Bible study, and I don't think that it is uh, ever been uh, revealed one hundred percent because God has not uh, given more credit amount. And so, what is the subject then, or what's uh, what's the deal with in going in all these books and apocryphal books and uh, literature, legends, mysticism, and all the stuff? When you know that the Bible clearly talks about science in the earth in those days, so there were giants in the earth. Why? Because the Bible did tell you. Yeah, and so therefore to go into all that nitty gritty besides that, that is highly dangerous because you do not know uh, afterwards which information was uh, originated from and uh, who is really the author of that stuff. So there is much confusion and that is on purpose. That is on purpose. Yeah, so there are Aramaic co copies of a book of giants among the Dead Sea Scrolls. You see, where do you know, where do you need the Dead Sea Scrolls from when you do not read your King James Bible anyway? I think that 66 books in the Bible are quite sufficient to know it all that Satan is the god of this world. Yeah. Well, you know, the old saying, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, piss. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's like that conversation I was saying the other day I had, you know, with, with my friend's mother is like, you know, 700 books of the Bible? I don't think so. Yeah. I really don't think so. Mm-hmm. Unless you want Satan to reign <laughs> yeah. as king over God. Yeah, that's what he wants. That's, that's mm -hmm. how the God of this world works. He just wants to confuse you. He wants to take away your faith. He wants to tell you that Jesus Christ was just a prophet, just a man. Mm -hmm. Has no meaning at all. And, uh, you know, just forget about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so where to start? You see, that is my, my point. You see, I don't want to spend all the time in, in that fruitless uh, uh, things going on into all that apocryphal books and legends, actually. Yeah, you have to stick to the Bible. And in the Bible, uh, the sons of God also be named in Daniel 4.13. Yeah, so Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, in, the, in, chap, in, in 14, he says... Uh, so I have to skip it, skip it here a bit. Yeah, that was just the reason I did that the last hour to show you my concern about going into all that books besides the Bible. We have to stick to the Bible, otherwise we will be lost. And if I'm getting lost, then what would you do as a listener to that program? I would not be of any help to you. So I have to stick to the Bible, Brad. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, what does um, then uh, Daniel reveal in the book of, uh, in the chapter 413? What does he say? He says, mm. 413, yes. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher. A watcher. The explanation is Hebrews 5.8.9.4. Ear, Chaldea, from a root corresponding, a watcher that is an angel. Yeah, so an angel is watching over you. So, yeah, that's what it is. A watcher is an angel, okay? And it, it goes uh, further on, that verse. He says, and... And an holy one. And an holy one. So that's Hebrews 6.9.2.2, a Kadesh. A saint. So the yeah. entire came so. down from heaven. That is. Yeah. yeah. So the entire <laughs> the entire verse is uh, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher mm. and a holy one came down from heaven. So a watcher means an angel, and a holy one means a saint. Uh huh. So that's Daniel four. Hmm. And I take it a saint is a believer in the true faith, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and an existing one. So, yes, of course, one that's alive, not yes. dead. 
<laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. very important. Daniel, very there it important. is. Sorry that I did two sessions already, and today I'm not the the, the fastest one. So four thought thirteen, a watcher. Yeah. So an angel, as a guardian, guardian angel, and a holy one. So a believer or somebody who is then uh, in a certain position. Yeah, a holy one came down from heaven. Yeah, so these two must be um, separated. Uh, for example, I think that's my interpretation. Um, they are can be separated from their garments, bread. Yeah, so so to speak. Yeah, so a watcher and a holy one. Otherwise, uh, Daniel would have saw seen uh, two watchers, right? Mm -hmm. So came down from heaven. Okay, so that is that is that. Um, and so therefore you have uh, several clues about uh, who's who in the Bible um, if you got an, an angel or a chief angel, a cherub, a holy one, a saint, sons of God and all the stuff. Yeah, so usually these are depictions of uh, celestial beings in a, in a broad sense of way. Because when we go to, back to the Bible, when uh, Adam and Eve were being uh, thrown out, out of the Garden of Eden or Paradise for that, uh, he placed cherubims there and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the Tree of Life. Yeah. So there are angels also not only to protect uh, uh, people, but angels to protect the possession of God, the Tree of Life. So they all have their different um, uh, tasks. And in Daniel 4.17, what does Daniel reveal? This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the... Did I read that right? Yeah. The demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up for, setteth up over it the basest of men. Mm -hmm. Now that's a verse which uh, can be discussed upon, huh? Well, given the context of the chapter. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, my problem is really the the time here that we do not have any time to make a deep study about that. I just wanted to know that uh, these watchers and holy ones have been mentioned uh, separate uh, separately and been mentioned often in the book of the Bible. So therefore, you know that these are just the messengers of God, yeah, so-called angels. Yeah, angel means messenger. And these angels are also giving out the message from. Uh, uh, from God uh, uh, to his prophet Daniel. So, yeah. So, and that that was was Daniel was seeing was a watcher and the holy one coming down from heaven. And uh, their prophecy, which he was just uh, uh, telling the king uh, what he just saw, and he saw just these uh, these messengers, a watcher and the holy one. This is just also the background of, of all the stuff which has been confused uh, because um, it, it's not necessary that there are only good watchers. There can also be evil watchers because when Satan is a spirit, or as Satan is a spirit, of course he has also his fallen angels which also can be seen as, uh, as watchers for Satan. Yeah? Because otherwise, can't you imagine why Peter Gabriel has been dressed up in that fashion here for watchers of the skies? Do you think that he's resembling a an, an, an divine being from the Almighty Lord? I have a hard time imagining that is the positive content here. Ah, uh, just being a mockery. Yes. Yeah, so Watcher of the Skies, yeah, that is from Genesis. Yeah, you see, this is, it is no lie. So these Watchers of the Skies were not part of the book of Genesis, although the group was named after the book of Genesis, because otherwise in uh, 20, 30, 40 years after Genesis had been founded in the end of the 1960s, 
everybody talks about the band Genesis and nobody talks about the book of Genesis bread. And this is my rant. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah? You have to exactly. Yeah. So this is this is the purpose of, of the and also one of the purposes that they got their inspiration of huh? that one of the purposes that they really have named themselves or somebody has given their name to the group because when Genesis was uh, created. Uh, Peter Gabriel was uh, just uh, below 20 years of age. Yeah? So, so watcher of the skies. Genesis says he is in the world of his own. He's uh, he's alone, of course, uh, because he's not part of the the earth. He's a, a celestial being. Yeah, raising his eyes, behold, a planet unknown. No, the earth is not a planet. The earth has no orbit because the earth is fixed. Yeah, so don't want to go in endlessly into this. Yeah, but uh, these watcher angels, um, we are not talking about the giants at the moment. I'm really sorry. Um, these watcher angels here also they have the name Grigori. Yeah, these watcher angels in Daniel 4 17. Daniel 4 17. Come on. Uh -huh. The watchers, there you go. Why does it not show up? Quick search. Ah, there you got. Yeah. The watcher is a guardian angel. So much we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the term Grigori, also very interesting, is not found in scripture. Watcher angels are mentioned in three verses of the Bible. This is uh, got questions here, which is not always correct answers. Um, not all translations use the term watcher angels. Um, the KGV speaks of watcher in Daniel 4.13. The NSAB, don't know that Bible, North American Special Bible, or what is it? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Don't Something know what like that is. That. Yeah, so what? Uh, mean, uh, calls an angelic watcher, but the NIV uh, simply calls as being a messenger, which means an angel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... Substantial debate. It's the Can... New American Standard Bible. Ah, thank you so much. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Okay. In other words, uh, mm -hmm. a corrupt version. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Corrupted by Jesuits, of course. Mm -hmm. Does the biblical book of Jude provide a clue? And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change for judgment on the great day. Mm -hmm. So that is very interesting. Biblical book of Jude. That is, uh, there's only one book of Jude, according to my knowledge. Zip. Jude. One. The angels. Yeah. Yeah. And the angels, would you like to read that? Yes. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Yeah, so you know that uh, there are angels who were not following the Lord, but uh, Satan, they left their own habitation. Yeah, and that's what their faith will be. So there are fallen ones, fallen angels, even in the book of Jude. So the continuation of the earth history is nothing else than the rebellion in heaven. The rebellion in heaven succeeded in the rebellion of mankind against the commandment of the Lord. By using a forbidden fruit, and this is not an apple. Huh? So... The serpent, uh, which is uh, wrong depicted here, because I don't think that the serpent in those times they were crawling on their belly, because then God's com God's uh, command would not make much sense. But uh, that's just my part of it. Yeah. Um, Perhaps they were more like the dragon than flying in the yeah, air. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, you got here. Remember of uh, Acts twelve, which is one of my favorite books <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, the book of Acts, also maybe not because we have talked about that, but uh, it has it is so rarely mentioned, Brad, I think, the book of Acts, for several reasons. Acts 12, 9 till 15. Um, 
Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was the uh, the serpent was actually speaking. Yes. In the same tongue as Adam and Eve, so mm -hmm. they were yeah. communicating. Yeah. Yeah, we're communicating. Yes. So that book of giants, ha! Ah, finally, we got to the back to the book of giants. Has long been known as a Middle Iranian work, <laughs> which tells you what. Well, that tells you that it it seems like it has been uh, added in Iranian, Middle Iranian work. That's where the Zoroastrians are coming yeah, from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So circulated in. Uh, AD 216. Yeah. So that was about 2000 years after the flood bread. And then mm -hmm. they came up with the book of giants. They're very credible, huh? Very credible amount. Yeah. <laughs> you got 2000 years of legends and rumors and then you decide to put out a book. Not a contemporary book. Not a contemporary book. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So there, there's so much distraction and so much confusion everywhere that I really mm. refuse to go into an every nitty gritty here. Yeah? The Manichaean Book of Giants was revealed in 1971 when Joseph T. Middick discovered several additional Aramaic fragments of Enochic works among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, you can find everything and add anything. You see that I can't prove it. He concluded that Giants was originally an integral part of Enoch 1 itself. Yeah, which Enoch? You see, that's why I wanted to uh, combine the Book of Enoch because I have read part of the book of Enoch yeah and I just want to stick to the Bible yeah you see that you got opinions of every people who's right who's wrong I can't tell but what I can tell is that I refuse myself to go into the apocryphic books of the Bible and all that stuff because that won't lead us anywhere to the truth it will distract us from the origin it will distract us from what's really important because what's really important is in the book of the Bible otherwise God had mentioned it and if you come to that point and say that oh well but the boss people who had decided which bo which book has been put uh, in in it then I can tell you from my own personal account that I have read a part of the book of of Enoch and I can tell that it is not inspired by by kind of a holy scripture according to my gut feeling that's all I can tell I'm not a Bible scholar I'm not an educated people I have not studied uh, theology theology or what else yeah I don't care I can't use it I can't work with that because then I would mix up the holy with the profane. Right. Yeah. So the book of giants, parts in which have been found in Hebrew as Qumran, was originally composed in Hebrew during the third century before common era. Come on, give me a break. That is before Christ, you loonies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you really, right. you really want to explain something and then you avoid the name of Christ. Well, that's great, huh? While the names of the giants Gigamesh and Hobabish betray a Babylonian provenance, which Babylonian oranges claim based on the name appearance, however, is refuted and blah, blah, blah. It's the same as the uh, Gospel of Thomas. You see that who, the Gospel of Thomas depicts uh, uh, Jesus as an average guy. Right, there we go. Yeah. That's spirit of Antichrist. That's, that's Gnosis, yes. And that is on purpose for the so-called New Age that everybody can be a god. Or as Alistair Crowley said, every woman and every man is a star. Yes, it's a fallen yeah, angel. It's a fallen one. You are fallen. We are fallen for all that lies. Yeah, You right. are fallen for the same lies that even the angels were falling for the lies of Satan. So you don't want to blame Eve for falling into the traps of Satan when the third of the angels were... You really think about that. You really it's think that like, you are so smart as an angel with your limited lifespan of 18 years and indoctrinated in that school system. You do not know anything. I don't know anything. I'm just trying to educate myself and to, to, to try to be of a little bit of help to others. But this is just mixing everything up. Yeah, you see, you do not know who is it been discovered on purpose bread it hasn't been an accident yeah but if you do not understand the word the world with the king james bible in 1611 you won't understand the world with the dead sea scrolls yeah what we know is there were an intercourse with human women and then you have that giant hybrid race of giants 
Yeah, and these watchers, if you call them in Greek, Gigori and giants, Nephilim, engage in a destructive and grossly immoral actions with devastated humanity, including the revealing of heaven's holy secret or something else, this is just opinion here, or mysteries, etc., etc. So, on the other hand, they most probably have to then uh, built the pyramids, which needs a great force, giant force, and also a giant knowledge to do so. This is not, not just the work of any lay people. These are just being uh, made as also like a watcher in the sky. This was also being made uh, according to the uh, star signs of Orion and all the stuff. Yeah, And Gregory is only the Slavic translation of the biblical watcher angels. Yeah, so it is very, very interesting to go into all the t all the details, but you won't find any truth in it except it is the Bible. Yeah, I agree, and Red also agrees that Watcher is a type of a biblical angel. But what does what Daniel had seen will remain his secret because he did not reveal anything except a Watcher and the Holy One. Yeah, so let's skip thousands of pages and things that you can't prove. Yeah, we have to stick to the Bible. So that was my elaborate uh, ranting on the Book of Giants and all the Apocryphica that you really see. That is my uh, kind of knowledge that I got on this very day here. And uh, so therefore there were all, also everywhere in every legend there was a struggle between good and evil. It turned out to be in, in heaven and then in, uh, in the righteous and the unrighteous line on, on earth. And you find that in every legend, in every mystery. Because there is no good when there is no evil. Because you can't, as a, as a man, uh, you can't uh, really differ uh, the one from another if you got no absolute. You have to have an absolute. Yeah, you see, it's either good or evil. Yeah, something can't be some something in between, I think. Yeah. It's like gray. Gray is a pollution of white. Yeah, which means it's not white anymore. It's not black. Yeah, but it's not white. So it's not good anymore because it's a pollution. So finally, going back to the Titans, Cyclops, and, uh, and, and Giants and all the stuff to sort it out. Who is who? <laughs> yeah, this is BS. Yeah, BS because uh, all the things are just legends who never existed. But when you know that the Titans were rebellions against the gods, yeah, then it is a, you got a hard luck or bad luck. Actually, you got bad luck when you uh, manufacture a ship and call itself Titan. <laughs> Titanic. To be precise yeah. and also there you got the intermingling of uh, the sky and the earth where prime ordeal gods and the progenitors of many they had lots of children together from titans you see where it all comes down from yeah it's uh, it's kind of similar of the sons of god came down to the daughters of men and they had an offspring called the giants and here in the legend you got uranus and gaia uranus meaning the sky and gaia meaning a representative of the earth or mother earth so father sky and mother earth yeah they had lots of children together from titans so something from above has intercourse with something on the earth and then they got offspring these are the titans which then were rebelling against god does that sound uh, any uh, familiar bread mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah very familiar i think huh so oh, yeah. from titans to gods to giants through the uni was not always a happy one. Yeah? So from Titans, they had children together, from Titans to gods to giants. Aha. They had children together, and they were the great grandparents of most of the Olympians. Huh? Oh, there you go. A ritual which many people only think of, oh, it's just sports. No, it is a ritual which has been uh, rehearsed every four years, according to my knowledge. Why do they do that rehearse every five years with the five rings? Oh, officially, they are uh, just a representative of the continent. But the problem is, if you see that on that perspective, that is a pyramid, Brad. Right. Yeah. So a rising moon as a six ring of the Olympic logo that hangs from the tower bridge. It is just coincidence. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Please go on. Yeah. Move further. <laughs> yeah. The following is a list set at website of the children of these gods, so to speak, uh, officially, so this is legend, explaining who they are, what they did or represented, and explaining their lasting impact on Greek mythology. The Gigantis. 
These giants, that is legend, that is not Bible. Huh? These giants were born from the blood of Uranus' sheared genitals, sprinkled on gala soil. And now you will uh, have that uh, translated into, uh, into my language. So, these giants, these big ones, were born from the blood of the sons of God, having intercourse with the soils of the daughters of men. So, this legend tells, in other words, the same story as the Bible. There were giants in the earth these days. When the sons of God, what is that context? I have to look it up. Actually, I can't do that from memory. I know that is in Genesis 6, 4, because that's the name, the title of that uh, broadcast, trying to be a broadcast. Could you please uh, repeat that, Brett? Sure. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Yeah. So it's, it's absolutely clear they bear children to them. So the sons of God bear children with the daughters of men. So these giants were born from the blood of these uh, sons of men, shared genitals, sprinkled on Gaia soil or on the soils of the daughters of men. And you say that that, that can't, can't happening because you see angels usually don't have any sex, huh? They were enemies of the Olympians. <laughs> yeah, the Greek word giant was used in Septuagint to refer to men of great size and strength. And this is Mr. Olympia Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hmm. Yeah, the Terminator. You know that Arnold Schwarzenegger says from website father was a high ranking Nazi SS officer under Hitler and his nickname was the Terminator. Did you know? I did not know and I do not know if that is correct. Yeah. But what I knew, know is that uh, these people know exactly what they have to do. Arnold Schwarzenegger with his famous pose, which is not a Nazi salute by any way, because there is no Nazi salute. Yeah, It's Never. a Roman salute. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Roman salute, yeah. yeah correct. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the, there was no Nazi salute. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's the Roman salute. So everybody who's asking, well, why, where did that strange Austrian guy Adolf Hitler has his ideas from? You see, you only have to look for symbolism, and you then you know. Oh, yeah. Well, just look to Mussolini. Yeah, first. look to Mussolini, yes. The Olympic salute yeah. also. That's an Olympic salute, which is far more older than the Roman salute, so to speak, the Olympic salute, they came from Greece. In Greece, we have learned that was the third animal, the third beast kingdom. Huh? Alexander the Great bred. Mm -hmm. right. yeah? So also the Olympic salute is not being used anymore because it looked too much like hailing Hitler. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But it's just a coincidence, huh? It's, no, the mm -hmm. angle is a little bit more steep. <laughs> yeah, that's in that's in Rome. When they're in Rome, you see Mussolini. He's he, that's Mussolini right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that is the statue of the Olympics here. That uh, if you really love yeah. the Olympics, you would do the of official Olympic salute. It goes like oh. this: right arm out slightly and pointed upward, fingers together, palm out, like kind of like you're raising your hand in class. Unfortunately, it is also kind of looks like you're hating Hitler. Oh, of course, Hitler was the leader, the Führer. He was like a god. So was Mussolini. So does Mussolini, yes. Ah. Well, that wasn't too long. I mean, you know, Mussolini was rise was quick, but uh, his fall was pretty great too. So the people really didn't like Mussolini. I don't wasn't think too he, much. Wasn't he named? Was Mussolini named by the Pope uh, like the 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 man of premonition or so? Something like that. I have something in my my my. Oh, mind. interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, something like this. Interesting. Uh, Mussolini, the, the man, man of, of perdition, you mean? No, 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 <laughs> Mussolini, the, the man of um, Mussolini uh, premonition, so that he was the chosen one or so. Oh, oh, I see. Premonition. Yeah, that's right. Premonition. Okay, I understand now. No, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell where I have read that, but it's just in my, in my uh, long-term memory somewhere. Sure, yeah? that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. it is absolutely futile to go into politics because all that politics they are coming down yeah. from to the root of Roman and Greece and also the metal man image of Daniel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The beast. The beast, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. The tyrannical government that runs mm -hmm. Yeah. Runs like a wild beast, yeah. Yeah, hyperlink copied, copy hyperlink. Paste. Yeah, that's Olympia 1924 in Paris, if that uh, shows up, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, that does not show up. So they are using that Roman or Greek or Olympic salute everywhere, yeah, before the rise of the Third Reich, yeah. And even even they claim <laughs> that it has something to do with the Trajan column, yeah. Trojan? Trajan, yeah, Trajan. Ah, Trajan, oh. Mm. Mm. I've never seen a script which has so torn apart like this. Yeah, Trajan called him a Roman triumphal column oh, in Rome, Italy. Oh, I recognize this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sitting right in Rome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, so back to the giants then. The giants had some names, although they had not been mentioned in the Bible, of course, like Leon or Pallas. Yeah, these are also automobile models. Uh, Leon by Seat and Pallas from uh, the French car manufacturer Citroën. Yeah. But uh, what do I know? Yeah, what do I know? What do I know? I think that I know that we have a very extremely interesting session lying in front of us and as we have uh, more than 90 minutes uh, please excuse me and please excuse for that uh, kind of a crazy session because uh, i could have prepared myself much better uh, but uh, this is really my concern when it comes down all to these apocryphal uh, legends mystery and uh, legend has it uh, uh, accounts of uh, Dead Sea Scrolls and all this stuff, I think that we do not need it. Uh, what we do need is really the King James Bible when it comes down to the nitty gritty that there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Yeah, So that would be very interesting to know um, what actually uh, was the cause of the flood. Yeah, So that uh, um, Lord says, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth. Yeah. So it was not uh, the disobedience of, of people or uh, any other concern or the, 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 the Garden of Eden incident or all the stuff. No, it was when the giants, um, no, it was when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. So when there was the interference in the creation of uh, the Lord, yeah, that is the real cause of the big flood. And uh, I would like to study that together with Brett uh, for that concern that uh, Jesus says it will be the second coming will be like in the days of Noah. So we have to find out what happened there and uh, what happened after that and uh, what is uh, the affection of our present situation. And then we can really see and take a look into the future and then we will really understand all the things that are happening. Because all the things that are happening are not happening by random but they're happening uh, in a plan. Yeah, so therefore we can read uh, their uh, their handwriting. We can really read their plans if we really stick to the Bible. We have to stick only to the Bible. We can't stick to the book of giants or to Enoch first book and second book and all this stuff. If you mix it up, you will be mixed up. And that is the purpose of that book, uh, it seems to me, or these books actually, Brad. Of course. So we have not learned much on this session, maybe, but maybe you have learned uh, my ideas about uh, why I do not use any book of giants and any accounts of any uh, uh, telltale uh, storyline uh, telling people. It is hard enough to stick to the Bible to understand everything, and sometimes we cannot understand it uh, for maybe my uh, my my daily bio rhythm or what else i do not know yeah sometimes i can only tell you no i don't know i have to study that and sometimes there are things which uh, it is it's not worth studying but it's worth to uh, get our time to try to um, educate ourselves and to let people participate in it we are not here teachers in any kind any sense of way we are just people who are looking for the truth and we just like you to participate because 
what I have learned from looking to the comments on Brad Norman's channel when it comes down to the uh, release of uh, that science sessions that they are really smart and loving people outside out there I I have the the feeling I'm, I'm sorry to say that in a special kind of way um, that the comments that I receive in the uh, on, on Brad's channel they are much more warmer and much more uh, nicer uh, than I receive the channels uh, than I receive uh, comments on my German channel I have to say yeah. So I would really like to hand over some valuable information and next time we will go really full force into that giant stuff and then you really, I think you will already see what I'm going to, to show you in the later sessions. Um, then we will really stick to the giants and we will not go to, to the titans and we will not go to the Anunnaki and all the stuff. I just wanted to hand you over, maybe you see that this is really a confusing item to go into, but uh, nevertheless maybe that one and a half hour session has prevented you to read all that apocryphal books because in my humble opinion it is a total waste of time if we have achieved that we have achieved a big feat to save mm -hmm. you time that you do not fall for all the distractions and being mixed up in the end and say whoa whoa whoa, whoa what's that guy talking about i have read in the book of enoch <laughs> yeah so if that session was that session which uh, which uh, was intended to be a uh, uh, confusion um, then you really see that uh, that would have made sense so i think that uh, the holy spirit is always there and sometimes the holy spirit is there to show you that it is absolutely unfruitful to go into some items which are not uh, important for your general understanding of the things to come and of your task in life and i think there are many things which are fascinating uh, listeners and people including me but are not worth the time to go into so into so i can only heartily recommend you to save time instead of reading all that apocryphic books into legend and mystics and looking to thousands of videos who are putting out uh, some legends and uh, uh, tell tales and fairy tales here and there just stick to the bible just stick to the bible i wish i had more time on my hands to read the bible but at well, least I got my yeah, Michael. It's quite simple, actually. You know that that you know what what once was is just continuing to this day. I mean, the the, the people of God have always been um, misled in the past, and in the future, I assume the same thing. I mean, it just the Bible predicts things getting worse and worse it doesn't predict things getting better in terms of the faith that's what we got to emphasize on the channel michael is that you know this is something very precious it's not just precious no it's very precious and the, the fact of the matter is someone can take your faith from you can steal your crown it says it right in the book of revelation we're not to let anyone steal our crown. But at the same time, you know, Michael and I are not some members of hierarchical thinking here. All of us are on the same level here. We might be further studied in some areas than others. That's true. And that's kind of another problem, you know, that we face. But one thing at a time, one little step at a time, we got to remember that you know if we really want that faith that was once delivered to the saints we have to take the time say for instance take sabbath and study and and read your bible here and there you know you don't have to learn the whole bible all at once you know you can learn just a little bit at a time that's the best way to do it and it says in scripture somewhere that it's little by little. I think it's in the book of Isaiah, isn't it? That we learn little by little, uh, you know, uh, line being, upon line, precept upon precept. It's I, in just the book being, of Isaiah. I'm just sorry to, to interrupt you, Brett. I've just been reminded of something that I just have read somewhere. I, I can't tell if it was in... Uh, to Babylon's or somewhere. I, I, I can't recall at the moment where it was uh, stated, but uh, usually people think of themselves as highly educated. Uh, but you see that in former times, um, I think it was the Waldensians 
Is it is it called Wardensians in, in American English? Wardensies? Yes. The, pe the people of Wardensies. Yeah. Um, I have read that there were people at the Wardensies who re even could recall the entire Bible word by word. And you and we think of ourselves as being clever. That's right, Michael. Yeah, we are being dumbed down. Yeah, we, that's right. Michael. We could we could be much more better, much more closer to the truth. But at the, the same truth. time, Michael, we don't need to be too hard on ourselves either because uh, we have to restore what's been lost. Okay? It's a restoration. It's a process of learning. And it takes time and it's delicate. And yeah, people can destroy your faith. It's just that simple. They can lie to you. You believe a lie and you give it power. It's like the same thing with politics, right? You start listening to politicians all the time. Guess what? <laughs> you, you're not going to have much faith in God anymore. You're going to have faith in man. And man is nothing but deception as far as I'm concerned in these days. Right, Michael? Yes, absolutely. They're all just actors, paid actors. Yeah. So this is what Satan is about is just to... Um, um, to keep you busy with all useless stuff that you don't have any energy to study the Bible. Yeah? Well, yeah, and it's not just useless, it's complex. Mm -hmm. Sophistication. Yeah. Blinding you with science by the use of complex words, by, by big words and complex explanations. Yeah. Here yeah. We go. Undermining the simplicity of Christ. Undermining the historical foundation of our faith. Very important, very precious. Anyone can obtain that simply by going out there and searching for the old books. It's just that simple. It's all in the old books. Yeah, but who wants to read books anyway? The people want to use their smartphone, tablet, and 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 all the stuff. Yeah. So that to well, get too rid bad of the for them. Too bad for them. They're going to miss out. Sorry to slap you in the face, but you lost. You're lost. But maybe you need a slap in the face, right, Michael? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how many thousands of hours I have to do research? Yeah. And then I found something like this session that said, oh, what's, what's, what's it worth for? Maybe it is worth to save your time. That you really stick to the Bible, to really stick to the truth, and you say that, oh yeah, this word is just a distraction. Been you know what, by... Michael? I would say that this book, The Two Babylons, is essential reading for anyone on this channel. You listen this far into Michael and I's session, uh, you gotta get yourself a copy of The Two Babylons. The papal worship proved the worship of Nimrod and his wife. Uh, this is really important reading, isn't it, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this basis inform basement information or base information. Yeah, so, it's foundational. Yeah, foundational. yeah, foundational. Yeah, so that that's that's what I have to say. That I've just I'm, I'm closing it down because I'm really tired. This is my third session today, and uh, I'm sorry, but I can really sh show you that next time they are coming up so many nice pictures and all the stuff and so many things. That you really see that uh, yo, it has nothing to do with the old history. It has something to do with the present history, which is going on. And uh, let me surprise you next time. Really, uh, I'm very eager to show that, especially when I know that next time there is a presentation of uh, of things which are only available in German so far. So that let me surprise you in the next time when it comes down to these. Uh, there were giants in the earth uh, in. Uh, Genesis 6 for the third uh, time we go into that uh, book of Genesis. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, please, Brett, please uh, close it off. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I think this is uh, going to be even... You know, these, are, these are advanced studies, I'd say, Michael. They're, they're not um, something that, uh, if you're new to this channel, is going to be necessarily easy and fun. No, this is more advanced. This is um, something that, you know, I would dare to say, count yourself blessed to 
to study with us on this subject. And, you know, you don't have to agree with us and you don't have to believe us either. But listen, uh, you need to study for yourself. We all need to study more. Um, you know, I'm just as guilty as anyone else, not having enough time to dedicate to doing the research necessary to uh, decode and to uh, explain the current situation. But yeah, we're we're uh, at the the time uh, where yeah, we either we gotta we gotta start uh, putting things together or. Um, we're going to be doled out a bunch of lies. And if we just sit there and accept the lies, uh, we're going to be deceived. And we don't want to be deceived, do we now? We want to be right there. And uh, as it says in Scripture, that uh, we don't want to be... Um, what What's the word now? I think it's in the book of Jeremiah now, if I'm not mistaken. Um and uh, I'm trying to remember the words, and they're just not coming. So <laughs> it's just another moment, Michael. Uh, I guess we call them senior moments, don't we? But anyway, uh, thank you very much, Michael, for coming to the microphone today and giving us another session in the series that is very important in this day and age because all we have is false science all around us. It's everywhere and it's in politics too, for goodness sakes. Talk about mixing it up. Um, but we know simply that things are getting worse and they'll continue to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And we know that we have some time left. It's not going to be... Um, as far as I understand it biblically, Michael, we're not going to be uh, uh, going into end times here in the next year or two. <laughs> no, I can agree It's going to be a while. That would be it's taken be long while. That has to do with the patience of the Lord, and this is a blessing. The patience of the Lord is actually Yeah, a amen to that. Yep. Hmm. So we'll catch up with you next time. God bless and Maranatha.